On today's episode of The Joy of Editing, we're going to get a look at Topaz Gigapixel 7's model comparison view. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Do you ever have a hard time deciding which is the proper AI upsizing model to use in Topaz Gigapixel 7 or Topaz Photo AI for that matter? Well, there's a really cool feature inside of Topaz Gigapixel 7 and that's the model comparison view. We're going to get a look at that today because it can really help us to determine which is the proper model to use for upsizing. If we look at the AI model section, you'll notice I have the lightning bolt toggled on and you could see the Gigapixel is choosing the low res model for us. But you can also go ahead and click on any of the different various AI models. And then you could try to figure out which one of these models would be best to upsize this image. Would it be standard? Would it be high fidelity? Would it be low res, art and CG? Well, in this case, I think it would either be standard, high fidelity, or low res. But again, if I check on the lightning bolt, Gigapixel 7 tells me that it thinks low res should be the right model. But is it the right model? For the tutorial today, I'm using a stock image. And right now, if we look at this image, we can see the original size is 1.93 by 2.58 inches, a very small image. Now, if I come up here to dimensions and click the drop down, and change this to pixels, we can see that this is uh, 3,480 by 4,638 pixels upsized six times. And I would think that low res would probably be the right AI model to use, but is it? Also note under settings, I have the lightning bolt turned on. That means I'm getting auto settings for whatever AI model I choose, which can be very helpful. And I find that Gigapixel 7 gets it right most of the time, but sometimes you may want to try a different AI model or some different settings, do a little experimentation and see if you can come up with some better results. And that's where this compare button really comes into play. Let me show you how this works. Click on compare. And you will notice you'll get this dialog that comes up. It says, choose up to four models to compare. You can choose two, you can choose three, you can choose up to four. In this case, I would choose maybe standard, high fidelity, low res, and just for the heck of it, let's try art and CG. I don't think it'll be any good, but let's check it anyway. Now, you do have a choice to remember your selections. If you always like to compare four different models or two different models or three, you could then check on remember my selection and it'll always use those models to check it out. I'm not going to check this for now and just click compare. And now you'll notice I have four comparison windows. I have standard, I have low resolution, I have high fidelity, and I have art and CG. And you'll also notice we have little X's in each one of these windows. So if I found one of these models that I didn't like, I could click the X and get rid of it and narrow down my search to the proper AI model. Now, this is something that you don't have in Topaz Photo AI. So if you're listening, Topaz, this is something I wish you would bring to Topaz Photo AI. I think it would be very helpful. Also take note, the active window will be highlighted in blue. You'll notice standard right now is highlighted. And these settings correspond to the window that has been highlighted. Okay, so in other words, these are the standard settings and they're the auto settings. If I click on low resolution, you can see the settings for low resolution or high fidelity or art and CG. And you'll notice the settings are all the same for all of these windows except for art and CG they change. By the way, you could change what you see in these windows just by clicking and dragging and moving around. I'm just left clicking with my mouse or you could come up to the viewer and just, you know, see the box in there. You can just move that around to where you want it to be. But I like to just come right in here and just move it with my mouse, whichever way you like is up to you. Right now I'm zoomed into 100% as you can see here, but this is a drop down. You can click this, you can zoom to fit, zoom into any one of these amounts up to 800% or you could drag the slider to increase the zoom or decrease the zoom size. It's totally up to you. And then for whatever window is active and you could tell again by the blue highlight around it, if you click the eye, you can see the before and you can see the after. So just make the window active that you want by clicking on it. And again, you could click the eye to see the before or after, or you could just 
left click with your mouse and hold and see the before or after or you could hold down your space bar to see the before and release the space bar to see the after but you'll only see the before and after on the window that is highlighted now let's look at the different windows now we have standard over here low resolution to the right of that and then here is high fidelity and then here is art and cg now as far as art and cg is concerned i don't like it so i'm going to click this x and get rid of it and now you'll notice I have low resolution right here. But you'll notice this low resolution window is a lot bigger, which is kind of nice in a way for now because I can really study this. Now, if I look at this image compared to standard and high fidelity, probably my least favorite would be high fidelity. And so I'm just going to click the X here. And now when I look at standard and I compare it to low resolution, there's some noise right around in here, some weird patterns of noise up in here, which I don't like so much, but I could go ahead and make the standard window active, and then I might take the denoise slider and drag it more to the right, and just look around these areas here, see if I can get rid of some of that noise. Okay, I'm not really getting rid of it. I'm gonna pull it up even more and take a look. I can get rid of some of that, but not all of it, and there's some noise in here, so I don't like it. So at this point, I think I do like low res the best. And that's originally what the auto AI model chose for me. But right now I'm going to click on low res. And right now we're set for the auto settings. So now that I've determined that I do like low res, let's go ahead and click apply model. And now you'll notice we're back to a single view where we can really study the image. And then at this point, I could go ahead and work with my settings. I could either use the auto settings or let's say I want a little bit more sharpening here. I could take my sharpen slider and drag it up to the right. And let's just see if we want a little bit more sharpening in this image. Now you have to wait a little bit of time for it to go ahead and re-render out. And I think I do like that little extra sharpness. You know, I could pull back in the noise reduction or give it more noise reduction. And then we also have the fixed compression slider we could adjust if we need to. And then, of course, you want to make sure you determine the right output size. You know, you could do a custom size by clicking on custom. But right now, I'm just upscaling this six times. And then at this point, all we need to do is click on export image. And I always give mine a prefix of Gigapixel 7, saving it to the original folder. And for format, I'm preserving the input format. And I'm outputting it to a color space of Adobe RGB 1998. And then all I have to do is click save and the image will save out. And that's all there is to it. But don't forget about the model comparison view. It can really help you out. Well, there it is. Model comparison view in Gigapixel 7. Not in Topaz Photo AI yet, but hopefully it'll get there soon. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Gully. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.